Hi there! Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we are doing our monthly video of what I read in X month. So this is going to be everything I read in July. Um, so if you like these sort of reading recap videos, just keep on watching. Um, July, like, ended up being a pretty, like, hit or miss busy month. Actually, it was very busy. A very busy month for me now that I'm thinking about it. So I only have, like, these two books and a kind of like short novella type book to talk about with you guys. Um, these are ones that I had been reading previously and I just ended up finishing in July. Um, so let's get into these and then yeah, we'll just chit chat at the end too about things I'm looking forward to reading in August. So yeah. Hi there. Um, I'm back and I look different because my microphone died while I was talking and um, instead of waiting for it to charge, I'm going to record a video now. <laughs> there you go, that's why uh, the glasses are on and the fit is wrinkly <laughs> and everything else. Okay, so if the audio sucks, I'm so sorry. Um, but that was my bad. My mic died and now I'm here. Okay, so um, according to the footage, we were talking about this book, A Deadly Inside Scoop um, by Abby Collette. So, as I was saying, this is a book that takes place in Ohio. It is about uh, uh, someone who is trying to restart the family business, which is an ice cream shop in Ohio. It's black women, black family, support black businesses. Yes. Okay. Well, something happens, and there's a murder mystery afoot. This is a cozy mystery. Um, she finds a dead body. <laughs> uh, she finds a dead body on her first day of business of reopening this ice cream shop. And um, she kind of voluntarily becomes interwoven with the mystery. Um, they suspect her father of being the first, like, um, suspect, I guess. <laughs> because um, of circumstances, the guy who died, apparently her family has beef with them. So they're automatically the first suspects. So in order to clear her family's name, um, she decides to start kind of being putting together her own, like, independent investigation. Um, this book was pretty good. Um, I, the vibes were vibing and if you're in here just for vibes, then you'll probably really like this. Um, but unfortunately I was a little disappointed with like the quality of the writing. Um, it was very simplistic, um, very dialogue heavy and, um, at times like was kind of repetitive. Uh, so unfortunately that did impede like the reading process for me. Um, it got distracting at times and there's times where I was just like trying to finish this because I'm stubborn <laughs> and I like to finish books. Um, the mystery itself, the majority of the book tries to distract you with like everybody in town basically being a suspect and goes through like everybody's sort of like relationship or role in this community. Um, the person who it is uh, isn't revealed until like the last two pages of the book and then at the end it feels a little rushed in my opinion um, when it comes to like capturing this person and by then it seems sort of random to me about who this person was so um, is this the best mystery I've ever read? No. Um, is this the best cozy book I've ever read? Not really but it, I would say this is exactly what I was looking for at the time though because I needed a like kind of breather read in between reading this because this is very very heavy and we'll talk about that in a minute um so I wanted a breather read and this did exactly that right it was easy simple perfect um in, in that regard there are two books after this one I believe and they all have a similar cover um in a different color palette but it's like an ice cream cone that looks like this and like a variation of a white cat um, so there are more books in this, uh, mystery books in this series if you want to check them out. Um, there's two more after this. And, um, you know, the one thing I really did like about this book that I wish other books did, especially if it's like a food-based um, story, right? Um, this book includes ice cream recipes. So there's four different recipes for ice cream in here. Um, there is snow ice cream which i didn't think was a thing but apparently it is you can make ice cream out of snow um and then the, all these recipes were mentioned in the in the book like in this plot of the story so we have cherry amaretto chocolate chunk ice cream we got pumpkin spice roll ice cream and um 
caramel corn ice cream. Again, I'm going to take pictures of these before I give this book back to the library because I got it from the Chicago Public Library. Um, but I gave an extra star on my Goodreads re review just for this because I think this was really cool. And again, it really, really plays into the cozy vibes. And um, I wish more books did that, especially if they are like food based books. Um, I know there's another series somebody recommended to me that is similar to this, but it's all around like Chinese food and like a murder mystery involving a Chinese restaurant. Um, I tried to look for those, but those are, they have a lot of books in the same series and you kind of have to start in chronological order. This one was the first one in this series, so that's why I got it. It was available at the library. Um, so yeah, I think this did exactly what I wanted it to, to do. Um, was it my favorite book I've read? No, but I did really enjoy it. So if you want to, if this sounds good to you, um, feel free to pick it up. So now <laughs> I'm going to talk about this book. Uh, I went on a rant in my previous footage about this book. So I'm going to try my best to be more concise, even though I have really big feelings about this book. This is Bright Young Woman by Jessica Knoll, and um, apparently she's also written something called The Luckiest Girl Alive, which is now a movie on Netflix, and I believe Mila Kunis is in it. I have not seen the book, or I have not seen the movie, and I haven't read that book, but I read this one, and this was my favorite read of all year. I'm not even joking. This is probably my favorite book I've read all year. Um, it's it's up there for some of my favorite books, but it's... it's um, really heavy and if you are somebody who um really can't handle like thinking about violence especially violence against women especially sexual based violence against women um you probably shouldn't pick this up it is not that graphic it's not a horror book this is a tr like a fictionalized true crime type book and um the story is through the perspectives of two women one of them's named pamela and the other one's named ruth um, and they are both tied to the serial killer guy and who is not named in the book, but you can kind of tell he's a fictionalized guy, but you can tell, kind of tell he's based on Ted Bundy and maybe some other folks. Um, but this story, instead of being about the serial killer, it is all through the perspective of the victims and survivors of this horrible man's uh, actions. Um, which I really appreciate. It's it, it, the whole point of this book is these women taking back the narrative of what was done to them. Um, Pamela is a survivor. Um, the, the guy brutally attacks her sorority one night and ends up killing a couple of different girls at the sorority. One of them happens to be her best friend, and um, he did horrible things to her. And so Pamela, who was already like pre-law, um, she spends kind of the rest of her life kind of becoming a lawyer and trying to seek justice and bring this guy um to justice right um she's she is a eyewitness of him seeing him run into the courtroom and so she's directly involved with the trial because she gives witness statements and it's kind of just like her experience with all of that um how this attack impacted herself and like the relationships she has with the other women in the sorority house also the relationships with the men in her life. And um, the thing that I really appreciate about this book is that it showed what I felt like was a really accurate depiction of misogyny in different levels. So clearly you have like misogyny from the serial killer guy who's stricklingly attacking women and doing horrible things to them. Um, but you also have the misogyny of people doubting her and like um, constantly questioning her all the time in the police force and in the judicial system um and then you also have like the way me the media is depicting the victims and herself and um you also have the reactions of immediate family members and even though they're trying to be like supportive and caring um their misogyny is still leaking out on the page um these attacks happened i believe in the late 60s early 70s or in the 70s um which was the height of serial killer <laughs> media i guess i don't know at that time um so there is like sexism from that time um but the th with pamela's perspective it continues up until recently um and shows her as an older person as well um the other woman that is a pov in this book is named ruth and she unfortunately did not survive the serial killer attack but that's stated in the beginning so that's not really like a, a spoiler or anything um, but Ruth is also one of his victims and um, for a long time she was just reported as a missing person um, instead of being linked to his murder and um, her 
partner Tina is the one that really tries to, again, has this like justice mission and is trying to get her disappearance tied to him because he did indeed uh, kill her. Okay. And they end up, you know, she's trying to find everything together. So Ruth's perspective is really interesting because Ruth is a woman who, um, she, uh, at that time, it was not cool to be openly queer. Um, she was sent to a conversion camp when her parents found her being with women. Um, and she was forced to marry a man who sh they didn't really, you know, get along with, I guess. Um, and so she was divorcing him, which is also taboo. Okay, sorry, there was like a bunch of sirens, so that <laughs> interrupted my train of thought. Tina meets Ruth um, through a group therapy, um, and she, Tina is studying to be a psychiatrist. She's got her own whole backstory, which is, you know, intense in and of itself. Um, but then the two of them ended up getting together and like Ruth is starting to come into her own and like figure out what she wants out of life and like even, you know, things about going back to culinary, going to culinary school, stuff like that. Um, so that's all going on there. But the, the thing I love most about this book, even if it's super, super heavy, it's like what I mentioned before, where it's really focusing on the narratives of the women and not the, um, it doesn't glorify the serial killer whatsoever. In fact, it, he completely remains nameless the entire time um, because th there is no personification for somebody who is that evil, basically. And that's the point that the author is really trying to get across. And this is like enacting a critique that I felt in the true crime community for a long time. And I'm not going to blame like a specific group fandom whatever but there is like this weird thing of people really sexualizing or fetishizing serial killers and like making them hot or like thinking that they're hot or thinking that these people are so cunning they kept evading the law or or they're just like secretly geniuses and they're just mad geniuses or whatever um that is heavily criticized and disproven in this entire book. Again, this is a fictionalized story. But um, in a lot of these cases, especially with, like, Ted Bundy, um, who, like, they even make a joke about that in here, talking about how he's played by Zac, Zac Efron. Anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, so <laughs> they talk about the a lot of this has um, critiques of police negligence. And, like, this guy is basically slipping through the cracks because of incompetent police officers. Um, that has happened before. I don't really need to um, harp on that too much. Um, but, like, in this book especially, the serial killer was somebody who um, wanted to be bigger than what they were, right? Um, the serial killer in this book um, wanted to be a lawyer too, um, but could not get the high enough test scores to successfully pass the bar or whatever. Um, but he still paraded, even during the courtroom, he acted as his own lawyer and representative. Granted, he did have an actual lawyer with him who was like helping him with the case because, yeah. Um, but he wanted to be perceived as a successful, um, intelligent, capable sort of man. And in the story, a lot of his victims are, hence the title, are women who have brilliant futures ahead of them who are bright and light up a room and you know they they just have this spunk or talent or intelligence and 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 he, his mission is to cut them down in their prime which I feel like occurs quite a bit unfortunately um and that's the crux of the books right it's not showcasing how brilliant the serial killer is it's how brilliant the victims are slash were um, and, and, it, and it's a sad read, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's intense and um, there's some quotes in here that really, really stuck with me. Um, but it's that sort of like incel type mentality that unfortunately like in the US here where I live is really prevalent and there's some really scary people who end up doing really, really harmful things based on feelings of inadequacy and solely that. And um, in this book they do talk about how the serial killer um, did grow up like apparently had some sort of troubled home life or abuse at home too um but you know it, it it's hard right because i feel like it's one thing to 
study the psychology of these types of people and figure out like where things went wrong. Um, but like, we should also remember that just because somebody comes from a bad home environment doesn't necessarily mean they'll turn out that way or like just because somebody has a certain like mental disorder does not inherently excuse the violence or act as the sole reasoning for that violence. Some of these people just flat out suck <laughs> and like that's what it is. And it's hard for me too because like this is such a thing like even with the Gypsy Rose case like um, with Gypsy Rose, like, I was really empathetic or sympathetic with her in the beginning, and, like, I, I read about her case, and, um, I've seen documentaries about her case, and, you know, she truly was a victim of her mother's illness and, like, the Munch, Munch, Kaus, Munch Kauser by proxy, um, where her mother was, like, doing all these unnecessary medical procedures on her as a child, and, um, the, the medical abuse that happened from that is crazy, um, and, and she went through so much pain and so much that she didn't even need to have to go through. Um, but at the same time, she did successfully orchestrate her mother's murder and, like, convince someone to do it for her. And that person's still in jail. And now she's out and she's like, I got a TLC show. And um, it's like, and I think people wanted to root for her to, for ha her to have a normal life and to be able to live past that. But this is still clearly somebody who wants, like, fame and infamy because again that's all she knows that's what her mother bred her for because they put her if you don't know about gypsy rose it's it's fascinating because her mother put her on tv and had her go on like do stuff with make a wish foundation like like she was sort of well known for being a sick child and so that sort of um i think attention seeking behavior is still programmed in her and of, of course it is right but that doesn't necessarily mean we should be encouraging it from somebody who you know did this stuff and like she even admits to herself in interviews she's like yeah i what i did was wrong i served my time and like i'm guilty of this and this is not good i don't want to be known for that anymore um and okay <laughs> but like it's just it's just the way we put these people on a pedestal is kind of wacky to me especially in the true crime community. So it's really refreshing to see this book kind of tear at that idea. And um, of course, this is through a very gendered point of view. But I really like this book. Like, this is the best book I've read all year. I get really psyched when I talk about this book to people. And um, I really recommend this. If, if you're interested in any of the stuff I've talked about, I really recommend reading this. It's very well written. It's gut-wrenching. It's it's fantastic um and i actually got this recommendation from um another youtuber who's known for book recommendations but i think her name is with cindy but it used to be like reads with cindy and i actually wrote down her last video she had a ton of book recommendations and i have them on the sticky note um but the other book she recommended was the encyclopedia of fairies like the emily Wilde's encyclopedia of fairies which is a romance book um but I thought it was fantastic and now um, I read this bright young woman and it's just as fantastic. So I'm really excited to get to the um, two other books that are on this list and I'll let you guys know if I like them too but I feel like I would. Um, one of them is Our Wives Under the Sea which is really really popular and the other one is called House of Harlow. Ha House of Hollow. Um, so those are also on my two, <laughs> two books to buy list um, but yeah so th th this is Bright Young Woman. Please buy it. Okay, thank you. 10 out of 10. Okay, so I also want to talk really quick about this novella, I guess, I read recently. It's a really short read. Um, it's by somebody that um, I am a mutual with on Instagram, and their name's Damien Casey. I read Heartburn by Damien Casey, which, um, if, if you know Damien, his writing is, like, kind of wacky and very different and zany. Um, he labels it Bubblegum Bizarro. So if you're if you're familiar with the bizarre genre, then you kind of know what it is. But um, some of his stuff is like kind of scary. Um, I know he's kind of in the horror community, but a lot of it is comical or satirical or you know just like goofy stuff. Um, I know I read Twenty Eight Days Sassier, and I had a video with that in it, um, which is like a Bigfoot story. But Heartburn is basically a, a, a story about a woman who goes on a series of bad tinder dates pretty much um and one good one and then of course they have the happily ever after with the good one at the end um but it's just like um <laughs> it's just going through different types of people within certain fandoms or certain groups and poking fun at them and um 
sometimes it reads as judgmental, but they address that at the end because the main character is a little judgmental. Um, but some of the critiques of these groups are funny, and um, if, if you like humor, if that sounds like a good plan to you, you should check out Heartburn by Dana Casey. Um, I know it's, I from what he told me, he said it's not always as popular as some of his other stuff, um, but I like this book a lot. So um, I really recommend it if you are looking for something quick. I literally finished it in one setting, um, and I just had fun reading, so there you go. Okay, so I had another thing I read, but I don't know if I can talk about it right now. Um, I recently joined the Horror Writers Association, and um, I am part an affiliate writer with their Chicago... Um, chapter. So sometimes people send me um, stuff to read because I volunteered to be a judge for the Brahm Stroker, Stroker Awards. Um, and so I get uh, PDFs of manuscripts and, and stuff sent to me. And I recently got a short story sent to me. And um, I'm not sure if I can talk about it on here. Um, but because I don't want to affect perceptions or whatever, or like, I don't know. But I'm trying to decide whether or not I should talk about those on here. So um, if you're interested in that, let me know. But I, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to talk about it now, even though I read it this month. And if I decide to talk about it, I'll talk about it in my August video. And I'll include that as well. I believe um, all the stuff is already published. So it should be free game to talk about. But of course, I, I just, I don't know what the exact rules of these things are. So when I, let me double check first and then I'll get back to you next month and I'll talk to you about that specific short story. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, in terms of what I'm reading now that I hopefully will finish in August, I have these two books that, um, I bought, sorry, it's raining now. So if you can hear rain, ooh, aesthetic, ASMR, uh, rain. Nice. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I got these two books. And they're basically very similar. <laughs> I already talked about, like, in the past how much I love Legends and Lattes. That is a cozy fantasy romance, low stakes, and queer fantasy romance, too. Um, but this is the second book in that series. It is actually a prequel because, of course, in Legends and Lattes, they live happily ever after the end. Um, but this book is about Viv when she's younger and she's part of a guild and, um, the book starts with her having an injury that kind of forces her to slow down and she can't do the the battles anymore. Um, so yeah, so she's injured. This Viv is this orc lady right here and she's in this like coastal town and she um, runs into this ratkin who's trying to uh, like restore her family bookstore and they have a dog, owl thingy, <laughs> named Pot Roast. And so they're kind of trying to rebuild this business. I'm only this far ahead in it, but I really like this book. I, I find myself reading multiple chapters at a time and I have to stop myself from reading too fast, which is always a good thing. But this is similar to the other cozy mystery I, I showed you because this is very, very cozy. It's slow pacing, but that doesn't mean it's boring. I think the author here does a great job of keeping you interested despite not a whole lot going on. Um, so if you are somebody who likes to play cozy games or likes to play games that are like, you know, Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley that like focus on rebuilding a business or a town, you will love this book in particular. The first one talks about rebuilding a coffee shop, which is also very good. Um, but this one is more focused on books themselves. So um, yeah, I'm reading it right now and I'm enjoying it very, very much. Um, so that's what I'm hoping to finish in August. And then the other book I'm working on is uh, Can't Spell Treason Without Teeth which I thought this, uh, I thought the title was really funny. So that's why I bought it. But if you know me, apparently I have a type. So this is also a sapphic, um, cozy fantasy love story between an assassin and a mage. And they both work for a queen, um, who is not the nicest and they, they're trying to say F this and they run away. And I think eventually they're going to make a tea, tea shop. Um, I'm not very far. I'm only this far because I've been reading um, bookshops and bone dust more, um, but it's the same sort of thing where it's supposed to be a cozy, romanticy thing. Um, this feels a little bit more actiony than the other book, bookshops and bone dust. But other than that, it it seems like a similar vibe. So when I'm more in this, I'll talk to you guys more about it. I actually got this from a bookstore that Douglas took me to. He organized a date for us, and it was really nice. Uh, he found a bookstore on Instagram called L The Last Chapter Bookstore. It's here in Chicago. And it's all just romance books. 
literally just romance. Um, but it's pretty like Instagrammy. The um the store had a lot of like photo opportunities, you know, for cute pics. And then they also sold quite a bit of merch too. Um, and then they only sold romance books. I was a little just let down with like the the selection of romance books. I felt like they could have had more books in the bookstore if I had to give them some criticism or helpful advice I would say get more books to sell um but I mean they had everything organized pretty well and they had it broken up in sections like dark romance sports romance uh queer romance you know so and they actually had quite a few queer uh romance books which made me happy so I was in the queer section and I picked this up um but yeah, if you're if you're interested in checking that bookstore out, it was a good time. It was a lovely neighborhood. Douglas and I had a great time. So I'm just letting y'all know this exists in Chicago. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it for the books that are occupying my headspace <laughs> lately, um, or the books I've read this month and like what I plan on reading next month. Um, if you guys know me, every now and then I throw in a surprise read <laughs> uh, for the month. So stay tuned for August to see if I actually finish those books or if I do read something else completely different entirely. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, there's lots of other uh, reading, monthly reading recaps on this channel. Um, so feel free to check those out. But you can also like, comment, share this video with a friend or subscribe to the channel. Um, let me know if you've read any of the books I've read and if you like them or if you don't. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to also say thank you for all the new sub subscribers I've been getting recently. Um, I really appreciate it, you guys. That's, that's super nice to think that you guys actually care about, uh, the stuff that I do and or say. That's very, uh, sweet. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So I just want to say thank you for that, too. Um, I'm feeling very grateful lately and very happy. So, um, yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> um, and... Anyway, so I'll see you again soon in a video next week. And until then, thanks. Bye.